everybody, my name is Holly Ann Knight and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Today I'm binding this little mug rug that I'm making on a bit of a whim and I thought I'd share with you how I like to join my binding strips. Now I typically do a straight join. This is largely because it's the first one I learned. Um, but I also, I'm still working on the whole bias join. I think it can get confusing. So if you find bias joining confusing, here's how I do my straight join. First, I lay both ends of my binding down so they meet in the middle, and I fold them back and I finger crease them. So you can see I've now got little creases in my binding. I'm now going to take those creases and I'm gonna keep them lined up as I pull them away from my quilt and I'm gonna open up my binding. Make sure these edges are lined up where your creases were, you may need to check. So see, I've pulled them kind of tight, so I need to loosen up. Open them up, check your width. It's okay if you're, you know, a couple of threads snug, but you don't want to be much more than that. A couple of threads snug will make sure you don't have any puckers, um, but a whole lot more and things will start getting funky. All right, so now that I've used this pen to kind of mark, where that crease was, like I said, I want to make sure that this is all lined up nice and straight. And I want to make sure that I pin perpendicular to the binding strips because I'm going to sew basically along my line of pins. Like that. Okay, now I'm going to flip this over and come under my machine and just fiddle with it a little bit more. See my back strip is wanting to crease back up, so I need to make sure I pull it flat. Lower my needle and go ahead and pull that first pin out because we don't want to run over any pins. Make sure everything is smooth and stitch straight across. Now, I do not back stitch when I'm attaching my binding because it's a lot easier to rip it back if there's not back stitching. Go ahead and Trim these little threads. And then I can lay this back down and see how close I am. And it looks like I am like right on the money. Do you see that? I can pull it snug and see how the binding is going to lay. Now, normally when we have a seam, it's a quarter inch. I like to trim. Make sure you don't actually trim the binding itself. You're just trimming the extra. I like to trim more like a half an inch because I find that it lies a little bit flatter when it's tucked inside that binding. So trim that off. Open up the seam before you crease your binding back over. So it lies just a little bit flat. Now you see, I can see that there's a little extra here. You see that? So all I have to do is flip back under my needle and so Say I have an eighth of an inch line that's barely visible there, and I'll just sew an eighth of an inch closer in. I can line this up to test it again. Which, with that seam in place, it'll be easier to go to one side rather than opening the seam. And that is looking pretty smooth. So now I will finish attaching my binding to my quilt. With this part, I do backstitch, beginning and end. Give a nice firm tug on your quilt to make sure that everything is all lined up and you don't have any puckers. Come right on down, backstitch again. And I've got a nice smooth join that I'm ready to press. I like to press away from my quilt before I flip my binding. And especially on a solid binding like this, um, that join is not going to show up very much even though it's a straight join. Um, but like I said, this is my favorite method and I hope that you'll give it a shot.